Hey guys and girls, so this is uh, the second part of my dash cam install video. I'm currently doing it on my 2010 Ford Flex EcoBeast. Please excuse all the traffic driving by. It is like a freaking highway out here, to say the least. But anyways, um, so what I've done is I've mounted, if you can see it, I've mounted the front camera and I've done it in a way so that very very little can be seen they say to center it on the actual uh, vehicle this is slightly off center you still see everything I think that it's gonna be a good spot uh, time will tell the only thing I need to do now is just get some uh, wire loom just to get those two wires together but all I did was ran it up and along here ran it inside actually the weather stripping here and basically everything comes out into this area here these are actually the wires from the dash cam and the rear cam and then what I did you can actually see that's the hardwire kit those are uh, I think they're capacitors I could be wrong somebody could answer that for me but um, what I did is I took two fuse taps so here they are here so for my Canadian viewers, uh, this is from Princess Auto. They were $5.99 a piece. Um, there was two styles. There was this one, which I've used before, and it'll handle up to a 15 amp. And then there's this one. It's a low profile. And I don't know if you can really see it there, but it's got a mass of plastic in between the spades. And just from looking at the style of fuse box that I have, I really don't think that that's going to work. So that's why I bought the two of them. So go out, get yourself, you'll need two fuse taps, one for the battery, one for the accessory. While you're at it, if you don't have any, pick up some spare fuses. These were actually on sale. I think they were seven bucks for 30 of them. Little known fact, most fuse boxes, uh, they're typically underneath the, uh, in the engine bay, in the, in the hood area, there is actually spares that you can steal from there if you're in a pinch. I don't like doing that. I've done it before, and then you get caught without them. Um, they're there for a reason. If you want to use them, it's up to you. Most people don't know that there usually is spares. So what I did is I located in the owner's manual that uh, fuse number 13, which does like the keypad mirror, whatever, uh, it's always on so that's your battery source and then number 33 is actually a spare and it's an accessory so it only turns on when the key's on so there's your two taps right there you hook your wires up and I'm gonna try. I don't know if you can see any of this or not but you can actually see where the taps are. And then all I did to the actual fuse panel cover was I put a little notch in there. Yeah, it looks like a dog's breakfast, but that's what the Dremel tool does to plastic. So that way that the uh, wires can come out of the cover, cover can go back on. It's a real crappy place that Ford put the interior fuse box. Usually it's in a kick panel. Uh, usually on the passenger side, it's not on this one for whatever reason. That's okay. We still got to it. So I'm going to leave the kick panel off the bottom for now. I just want to make sure that everything works. I've gone through the setup with the app to try to get everything uh, calibrated and uh, everything looks good, but I'm just, I want to make sure that everything works before I start closing everything up. I still have the interior panels to mount back up but as you can see 